So welcome to week six of uh, Signal Study Group. Um, this uh, in this tutorial, I'd like to uh, show you an operation called the discrete Fourier transform, which is derived from the discrete time Fourier series. So let's just jump into it. Um, if I have a Fourier transform like this, okay. If I have some sort of a Fourier transform, you know, which looks like this, you know that the discrete time Fourier transform is, you know, some continuous function, okay. Now a discrete time sequence okay would be something like this okay and we use a discrete time sequence because we cannot work with continuous time uh, sequences in in a computer okay normally we can we can't use this in a digital computer okay so so we we discretize a sequence we sample it and then we uh, quantize it and so on if you, you i'm sure you remember uh, this from the from the week one tutorial okay and uh, we we discretize this okay However, when we take the Fourier transform of this discrete sequence, we again get a continuous function, okay? And we cannot work with this in a computer because it's continuous. So what we do is we sample it, okay? And how this works is if we have n points here, so if you have one, two, three, four, five, I sample five points like this, three, four, five, and they're equidistant points, okay? And when I sample these points, okay, correctly, I will get uh, what is known as the discrete Fourier transform. So that's what that's what that's what the name comes from. You take the Fourier transform and you discretize it. Okay, and uh, that's that's the main idea behind uh, the concept. And uh, the formulae for these are quite straightforward, although we won't use them. Okay, uh, we won't use them directly. So the formulae for the discrete Fourier transform to find out. So this is like the uh, analysis equation. So to find out the DFT, okay, um, capital X of n. Okay, and uh, sorry, capital X of K. Uh, we used omega for the uh, Fourier transform. We will use K for uh, the d DFT. So this is equal to summation um, n equals zero to n minus one. Okay, where n is the uh, so if this is my sequence, n is the duration of the sequence. If you remember, the Fourier transform is for aperiodic sequences. So uh, a is uh, n is the size of my sequence. Okay, and uh, x of n small x of n okay e raised to minus j um, 2 pi uh, k n over n okay so this is like my analysis equation uh, similarly my synthesis equation is i dft okay inverse dft okay and this is x of n we're getting back the original discrete time sequence this is equal to 1 over n okay summation uh, k equals 0 to n minus 1 okay um, oh yeah by the way uh, k over here is equal to 0 1 2 and so on all the way to n minus 1 okay uh, so let, let's get back to this formula you have x of k e raised to j 2 pi k n by capital n okay and here n is equal to 0 1 2 uh, etc till n minus 1 okay so this is my these are my formulae to find out uh, the, the the Fourier transform and to actually make it a little simple uh, to make the notation a little simple what we do is we take this e raised to minus j um, 2 pi by n term okay we take this term and we set this equal to uh, wn and um, this should actually be omega okay so anyway I'll just use wn and uh, this refers to the nth root of unity so if if you're familiar with complex numbers uh, if you take the cube root of uh, unity you would get minus one you would also get uh, what would you get i think you get minus three by two uh, you, you get something okay so you, you get three three uh, three cube roots of unity similarly you'd get n nth roots of unity okay so that's why uh, i remember using the notation omega over there okay but my book here uses w anyway so we use this notation okay so this term okay is actually w sub n raised to k n okay similarly this term here is uh, w sub n raised to minus k n okay and so so for example my dft equation would change to okay would would look like this now summation okay i'm not i'm going to skip the limits of summation so you get x of n w sub n raised to k n okay so this is how my formula would look and it looks it makes things simple plus it makes uh, it shows an, an easier way to compute uh, the dft you don't really need to use these formulae explicitly okay 
so the simple simpler way okay, it's not the simplest way okay but the simpler way is to use uh, a matrix okay um, and we do this as follows um, let me go back to the brush okay so the matrix um, so what we do is we take our input okay we take the sequence the discrete time sequence and we put that in a column vector so you would get for example x of 0 x of 1 and so on up to x of n actually you know what we'll just take an e we'll take an example okay take an example um, it will not it will not make sense if i write uh, general terms so we'll just use an example suppose i have uh, the sequence x of n equals 1 2 3 and 4 okay so this is like a four points four point uh, sequence and i want to find the dft of this so i convert this into a column vector so my column vector would be x of n equals 1 2 3 4 okay and what i do is i construct a matrix and i call this w sub n okay and this is equal to a four cor four cross four matrix okay so this would have a w4 raised to 0 okay all of this would have w4 raised to 0 4 raised to 0 and you'd have the same here 4 raised to 0 w4 raised to 0 okay next you would have w4 raised to 1 okay or w4 raised to 2 and w4 raised to 3 okay similarly you would have w4 raised to 0 1 2 and 3 okay this would be w4 raised to 4 w4 raised to 6 i hope you can get the sequence so this is like 0 1 2 3 this is 0 2 4 6 and this would be 0 3 6 9 right so this would be 6 and this would be w4 raised to 9 okay and uh, if you remember that w4 uh, w4 would be e to the minus j uh, 2 pi by 4 okay we can compute each of these values and what we'd get is 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 okay because anything raised to 0 is 1 and here we would get minus j okay, and that's easy to compute because e raised to minus j 2 pi by 4 raised to 1 right raised to 1 is e to the uh, minus j 2 pi so you get cos of pi by 2 plus j times sine of minus pi by 2 okay and this was minus j right i've used Euler's theorem that so i get minus 1 here and i get j here then i'll get minus 1 1 minus 1 and i will get j minus 1 and j okay so this is my square matrix okay and what i do is i compute i compute x of n x of k okay and this is equal to uh, w of n w sub n times x of n small x of n so i just multiply uh, it with the input sequence of which i want to find the fourier transform and let's compute x of k quickly okay so the first row would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 which is 10 second row would be 1 minus so if i just write this here to make it simpler to compute okay this would be 1 into 1 okay this would be 3 into minus 1 so i'd get a minus 2 if i add the two up two together i would get minus 2j plus 4j so this is plus 2j okay and then i get uh, a 1 okay plus there is something not right here okay i would get a 1 okay 1 into 1 is 1 minus 2 is minus 1 plus 3 is 2 and minus 4 is minus 2 so i get a minus 2 here and the last term would be the conjugate of this okay and uh, 10 so this is my fourier transform okay this is my dft so the dft is this okay so dft of this sequence 1 2 3 4 is this and i've computed it very quickly just using mat uh, a matrix right okay and uh, and uh, we can compute the inverse uh, dft as well and to do that we use uh, we use the formula that x of n okay small x of n is equal to 1 over n w n star times capital x of k okay i'm not going to do the computation you can do this as an exercise so w star n is the complex conjugate matrix so these ones will remain as it is the minus j would become j and this j would become minus j and you take the Fourier, you take the DFT over here, and you multiply this. You should get, you have to get the one, two, three, four back. Okay, so this is the DFT. Okay, and uh, um, I will actually do only this much for now. Okay, 
uh, just uh, just get the hang of this i hope this would i hope this all sinks in uh, this is part one of the tutorial in the next tutorial i would uh, actually expand upon the dft and uh, talk of, talk to you about a concept called uh, the uh, concept called circular convolution so how could you use the dft in co for convolution okay and the convolution is a special a special type of convolution it's called circular convolution and you will know why um, so that that would be part two and part three okay so I, I need to talk about circular convolution okay so that that's like what's coming up so this is circular convolution circular convolution okay and part three would be called the FFT okay um, we have actually encountered encountered the FFT in the image processing uh, video. Uh, I will actually show you what the FFT is. The FFT is actually a very simple, a very fast uh, algorithm. In fact, it, it was the fastest algorithm, if I remember correctly. And someone has found a faster algorithm than this quite recently. But uh, for all, for all, uh, for for now, just understand this is one of the fastest algorithms to compute uh, the f the DFT of a, of a sequence. Okay. Of, of a sequence so th these two would be uh, I would have to I would actually uh, have tutorials on these two concepts very shortly okay so that's it for now